Hello, it's now September 6, 2010. This is my entry into the 2010 Aquatic Gardeners Association competition. Uh, I call this composition Jungle Bubble. As you can see, it's very jungly. There's a lot of Echinodurus telonus back there. Uh, a little bit of a what I think is a giant red crypt, but I'm not sure on the right. Um, there's also some green cryptocornies uh, fighting to compete back here by the uh, piece of wood. And there is, by the way, a little bit of moss on the wood. It's hard to see. Um, and in the back, of course, we have a large Amazonicus. Um, and as far as fish are concerned, we have these two ember tetras here that uh, seem to be a pair. And one of three cardinals has just floated by. And this beautiful ram cichlid down here is a blue ram. Uh, very, very uh, beautiful fish. I have some nice shots of him on the Aquatic Gardeners page that should be linked in the description. Um, and uh, so there's two blue rams actually. I think they're a male and female, judging from their behavior. And there's uh, two Otosynclus catfish and two Yamato, uh, you know, uh, Amano shrimp. And the Amano shrimp are rarely visible because they have a full time job getting rid of algae, as, as do the Otosynclises. There's an Otosynclis right now. My camera doesn't want to focus on him, but there he is. Um, so down here, I have this really lovely stuff. It's this very dark green, uh, small leaf plant. It's an Anubia, but it's not an Anubius nana. The, uh, the leaves are actually much smaller than that. You can see the, uh, the blue ram playing in front of the shell there. Let's see if I can get one of the cardinals to come out, besides this enterprising young guy. Well, so, uh, oh, there's one way back there. You can see him. Thank goodness for HD. So this isn't just to try to win a competition. In fact, judging from what I've seen in prior years, I don't think I have much chance. My point here is to show how to construct uh, a no moving parts aquarium. Uh, basically all that we have coming in, let me zoom back a little bit, is this uh, twisty light with a twisty neck. It's an LED light. It's about four point something watts for the foreground. And then in the background, and sometimes I switch them, I exchange them, uh, is another 11 watt, and this is a fluorescent. So between the fluorescent and the LED, we're looking at a total of 15 watts. Very little light. Uh, this bowl, by the way, um, this is not a perfect bowl. There are uh, some aberrations in the glass. You probably can't see them here in the video. Um, but uh, this bowl cost me about 45 US bucks. Um, it was made in China. Um, the entire bowl grossly is about 35 liters. I suspect though that because I'm using up so much, uh, so much of the gravel on the bottom, I had to make the gravel about, oh geez, uh, even 10 or 11 centimeters deep just because of the curvature of the bowl so that it'd have enough space at the sides to get some good rooting on the plants around the edges. Um, I suspect that I'm only using uh, probably 29 liters or something like that. Maybe let's call it 30 liters. Um, but back to the point of this is just to show that you can create a virtually independent, not quite independent, ecosystem uh, with no filtration at all. The only thing I'm adding again is 15 watts of light and I could probably cut that if I used all LEDs. And I'm adding carbon dioxide. Here I'll show you the carbon dioxide. Um, a little system down here, which is, uh, here's my CO2 system, CO2. Yeah, the regulator is reading about uh, 70 or so, 71 PSI. And there's a little bubble counter down there and a splitter. And it comes up here to the back of the bowl. And here you can see CO2 bubbling out. So that's all that's going in. There's light and there's CO2. And then I use some uh, CCAM trace, CCAM iron, and uh, CCAM uh, potassium. Um, and I don't pay too much attention to the recommended dosage. I tend to go on the low side and I basically intuit based on my plant health or lack thereof and uh, you know the rate of growth of algae as to whether I'm overshooting or undershooting uh, any of the various nutrients. Um, and then of course nitrates and whatnot come from the, uh, come from the fish. Um, and then of course the plants also produce oxygen for the fish. Now granted, let me show you, there is an open top to this thing. So here, I'll take this back a little bit so maybe you can see. So this is this big, huge bowl opening. And I, and I do, by the way, as far as water changes are concerned, um, basically at the end of a week, if there's been no water change, this water is probably clean enough to drink. 
don't try that at home, but as far as it looks, it's clean enough to drink. Um, I don't need to change it at all, but I do, simply to get myself access down to the plants on the bottom so I can trim them back. If anything, the growth is too excessive, as you can see. Um, and uh, basically, I, I you know clean out the excessive growth on the bottom of the tank, uh, on the bottom of the bowl, to uh, make it look a little bit more reasonable and not just a total jungle. Um, and so that's why I actually changed the water. And, and I do like to scrape off uh, any excess algae that I find in the glass, um, but that's pretty rare because the uh, otosynclases are busy all day doing that for me. Um, so I think one thing that's really important here is, is bio load. I mean, as you can see, I have only, you know, three cardinals, two embers, two otosynclases, two rams, uh, two Yamato shrimp, and two, oto uh, I mentioned the otosynclases. Um, so it's not a heck of a lot of bio load for eight gallons, particularly when uh, I've got this many plants, and I think that's part of the key to sustainability. But it's just great to be able to have something this beautiful on your desk that really, frankly, helps me think and focus during the day, but to not be dependent on any plastic parts or motor parts or anything. It's completely silent. The only thing going in is gas and light. And that, by the way, is a shell down there. Let's see. Oh, here comes my ram. If only I could get him in focus. Hmm, my digital camera doesn't have the greatest focus. Anyhow, so there it is. So I, I'm sure you can do this on a much larger scale, and I'm sure I could get rid of the uh, need for light simply by putting it outside if I had good outside access and temperature support year-round that would be compatible with this kind of environment. Unfortunately, I don't have those. Um, you know, so in your case, if you have a really cold environment, you might have to actually put a heater in here. Uh, I don't, because the weather's pretty, pretty warm right now. Um, but that's about it. Even if you put a heater in, you wouldn't have any moving parts. And it's just just beautiful. You can see off to the left is my computer. It, uh, it's a great way to focus when you're working on something complicated on the computer. Just take a step back and look at the miracle of nature. So anyway, that's it. That's my jungle bubble. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I've inspired a few of you to try to make your aquarium so sustainable that you hardly need any maintenance at all.